look up at the night sky, and I know that yes, we are part of this universe, we are in this universe, but perhaps more important than both of those things is that the universe is in us. When I reflect on that fact, I look up, many people feel small because they're small and the universe is big, but I feel big. Because my atoms came from those stars. What is the power of thought? Because we talk about this all the time, this in personal development today, everyone's talking about, you know, you gotta control your thoughts and control your habits and all these things. And there's a baseline message about that. But you're the best in the world at explaining exactly why this is so important. So give us some background there. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, if we, everything starts with a thought. I mean, everything that you do in your life, you, you have to have a thought before you initiate an action, right? So, mm -hmm. so if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, like any great leader in history understands that, uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to decide, are you going to be defined by a vision of the future or are you going to live by the memories of the past? So, I'll give you an example. Most people wake up in the morning and your brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact of everything you've learned and experienced to this moment, right? It's a, it's a memory bank. So most people wake up in the morning and they start thinking about their problems and those problems are connected to certain people and things at certain times and places. And the moment they start, start turning on those circuits, those memories are actually causing them to think in the past. Every single one of those memories has an emotion associated with them and emotions are the end product of past experiences. So then the moment they recall the event or they, the, they recall some problem in their life, they start feeling unhappy, they start feeling discouraged, they start feeling anxious. Now thoughts are the uh, language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body and how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So we could say then, hmm. most people's entire state of being when they start their day is in the familiar past. Well, if you live in the familiar past, then it makes sense you're gonna create the predictable future. And so what happens for most people is they get stuck in their biology. So think about this. Your body is your unconscious mind. It doesn't know the difference between an experience in your life that creates an emotion and an emotion that you can create by thought alone. So if you're living by the same emotion every single day and those emotions are influencing your thoughts and you can't think greater than how you feel or feelings have become the means of thinking, you're thinking in the past. Your lens of the future is going to be colored by the past so you can't see possibilities. So, most people like to wait for a crisis or a disease or a diagnosis before they wake up yes. enough to see. Well, the challenge is, is that biology tends to be redundant. So if you keep thinking the same thoughts and those thoughts be begin to fire certain circuits of your brain, the nerve cells that fire together, wire together. So all of a sudden you start getting hardwired. And those are the thoughts that you can think the easiest. At the same time, those thoughts produce chemicals called emotions. And the next thing you know, your body gets accustomed to living by the same emotions. And it could be guilt, it could be unhappiness, it could be pain. But at least it's familiar to you, at least you can predict it. So some people would rather cling to the familiar than take a chance in possibility. So for most people then they say, well, I don't really see how my thoughts have anything to do with my destiny. Well, that's because 95% of those thoughts are subconscious programs, right? So you're not even conscious that you think those thoughts. So the first step to change is starting to think about what you've been thinking about yes. and change it. And, and then when you begin to observe those thoughts, you're no longer the program, you're the consciousness observing Just the simply by being an observer of your thoughts. Right. So, so the, so, most people though, when, they, when you do that, when you decide to really take a look, it's like lighting a match in a dark place. Mm. So you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to turn on your TV, it's easier to, mm. to play with your cell phone, to distract yourself mm. from those feelings. Well, when you understand that change really requires becoming uncomfortable to a certain degree, and that's normal, that you're yeah. leaving the known and okay. you're stepping into the unknown, okay. then it begs the question, what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? Because your attention on those thoughts begins to re reorganize circuitry, re remold the brain.